Lord spoke this. Is it's a it's a message of we're all coming to this world in this state of rebellion, joining ourselves to the wrong people because it's the nature we're born with. And our heavenly Father is waiting for us to come to that place where we come to our senses, like we see in verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? And we can see both applications here. The father who had a son in open rebellion must have treated his son with love. Because a son could think back, think back what it was like in his father's house. And as we read down, we see he even felt like the door was open where he could go back to his father and at least be taken in as a hired servant. Because he didn't feel like his father had cut all ties and written them off. But even in this rebellion, the father showed love to the son. And of course, the application the Lord Jesus wants us to have is no matter where we are, no matter how we have dealt with God, whether we have been faithful, whether we've never come to our senses, no matter where we are, the call to us is, our Father is waiting for us to come to ourselves, to come to our senses, to be real and consider our eternal state and to turn to him and say, Father, forgive me. You know, if you've never come to that place of saying, Father, forgive me. If you've never taken inventory of your life and seen that you're living in rebellion, now is the time to say, enough is enough. And I'm come to my senses. And I'm going to go to my Heavenly Father. And I'm going to go there humbly. And Father, even if you want me to be the lowest of servants, just forgive me of my sins. Let me be in your house. So the son, when he came himself, thought of those hired servants. And how they were well cared for in his father's home. And he says, I will rise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of your hired servants. And he was rose, and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. Now in parent-child relationships, we can see the example that we have here is the father was waiting, always looking. And what was in his heart? My son, come home to me. It wasn't when he gets home, I'm going to judge him. And he saw him in that distance. And he ran to his son. And isn't that what a father is looking for. Isn't that what we fathers here in this room are looking for when our children are going the wrong direction? We're waiting for them to turn back. We're not waiting because it's our desire to punish and judge them, but it's our desire to see them come into right standing with our Heavenly Father and with us. And we need to keep that door open. No matter what's going on, keep the door open with your children. That they know that they can come back. And it's not always easy. Especially when the rebellion is directed at you, just like the, here. The son saying, give me the inheritance while you're still breathing. And this, verse 21, And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring in his hand and shoes in his feet, 
and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Can you imagine that father's delight? And isn't that the delight of any father when they see their children coming back? Yes! Kill the fatted calf. Put a ring on their finger. Put sandals on their feet. Clothe them. Because, son, I love you. And you're welcome here in my home. And when our children wander, isn't that what we're waiting for? But sometimes we need to be like this father and just let them go. And do their own thing even when it seems wrong. You know, we can't look at this and make rules out of it. But we can see this is how Jesus delivered this parable. And now, the son that comes home, he was dead. Now he's alive. He was lost. Now he's found. And this, of course, is what our Lord Jesus wants to do with us and our sins if we haven't come to is the truth is, we're dead and we're lost until we come back to Jesus. And do we come to Him and say, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven. The way I've treated other people, the way I've treated my parents, the things that I've done, you call sin. And I don't want to be lost. And I don't want to be dead in your sight. But I want to be alive. And right now, our Father in Heaven is waiting, waiting for you to come, come to your senses and come to Him. Now the elder son was in the field. As he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and thy, your father has killed the fatted calf because he's received him safe and sound. You see, that's what the father cared about. He's back. He's safe. He's sound. I'm rejoicing. He was lost. He's found. He was dead. He's alive. But what was the son thinking? He was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time your commandment, and yet you never gave me a calf that I might make merry with my friends. You see, the one son comparing himself to the other son, it's like, Dad, you're not fair. You're doing all this for him. You've never done this for me. And I've always been faithful. And he's the rebellious one. Why? Why are you doing it for him? I'm angry. This isn't fair. This isn't right, Dad. But was that what the dad was thinking? My son was lost. Your brother was lost. The one thing that I stayed up for, I was there waiting night by night for him to come to his senses, and he came to his senses, and of course I'm rejoicing. And I want you to come and rejoice with me, because your brother has been found. It's not that I was treating you unfair. It's not about comparing brother to brother and brother to sister and sister to sister. And sometimes, children, we need to recognize our parents treat us each individually wanting the best for all of us, right? Your parents want to see you in the kingdom of heaven. And they're not treating you different because they're being fair and playing favorites. But they're tre treating you as individuals, knowing where you're at, knowing what you need. But as soon as this your son was come, which has devoured your living with harlots, you have killed him for him the fatted calf. And he said to him, Son, you are ever with me, and all that I have is yours. Remember what I did to your brother? I gave him what he wanted. All that I have is yours, son. It was right that we should be merry and be glad, for this your brother was dead and was alive again and was lost and is found. And the parable ends. And we don't get the answer. What did the son do? Did he come in and rejoice? 
Or did he stay out and be angry? And that's the question for you today. What do you do? Do you stay out? Or do you accept God's offer to come in? That's the call to you who have never come to the cross. That's the call to you who are living in disobedience. That's the call to you who may be started right but don't seem to be finishing well and walking with God. Come back to Him this morning. Come to Him. Come in the house. He wants to put a ring on your finger.